Hi everybody. Welcome to the Wild Garden Farms kitchen. We have a little bit of a different view here today. I am on my red quilt. This is my herby quilt. When we come in with all of our herbs and when we're making medicine, we sit on this blanket and chop and infuse and do all that good stuff. So today I'm going to teach you how to make fire cider. So this is really perfect for this time of year. We are shifting from, we've been talking about chamomile, we're shifting now into elderberry. So I wanted to go ahead and get some elderberry fire cider started so that it can be infusing and just macerating over the next six weeks so that we can have it when it really starts to get cold and you know, the, the cold and flu season is upon us. So this is a recipe that was created about 40 years ago by Rosemary Gladstar and some of her friends who were looking at, okay, what can we do? What can we use? What plants can we use um, to really boost, to boost the immune system, to boost the moods, to help to clear um, the symptoms of cold and flu? And fire cider is what they came up with. This is one of my favorite books. It's a fire cider book, Rosemary Gladstar and Friends, and it has tons of fire cider recipes if you wanna play, but I'm gonna show you really how simple this is. You need all things immune boosting, uh, body supporting, and fiery. Totally fiery. So this is a fire spiced Cider. The idea is to bring heat to the body, to be able to expel, like actual, literally physically expel things from our bodies, the mucus, the phlegm, or, you know, if we're working, working with the viruses and bacteria for, for upgrades and then it's time, it helps them do their job and then move on. So let me show you how to do this. I've got a couple ingredients here, but really this is just make your own. These are some elderberries that I harvested last year and they've been frozen. Um, Scott has some, a huge tree at work and I'm gonna make some elderberry fire cider today. I'm gonna put about a fourth a cup in there. So elderberry is incredibly good at helping us to resolve our, what I call the, the healing phase or sickness. Um, it helps us to resolve it really quickly. There are lots of studies on elderberry and how incredibly potent it is, especially when compared to some of the other more conventional cold and flu treatments. Um, it kicks their booty. It is so good. It's an expectorant. It helps you to get stuff up and out. Um, it helps to with the length and the severity of the sickness. So we're definitely gonna use some, some elderberry. So I've got elderberry, I've got cinnamon, Again, thinking like kitchen spices, spiciness, heat, ginger. So I'm just rough chopping the ginger here. So heating, really good for helping inflammation, really good for cramping. If you feel, you know, sometimes you're just kind of contracted when you're sick or in that healing phase. All right, so I'm gonna put some ginger in there. And then I've got some nice turmeric that I'm gonna put in there as well. So let's just chop that up. Oh, this color is stunning. So turmeric and ginger um, helping digestion, helping to clean up and clear out just debris from your system, from your body. All right. Um, let's get, I'm gonna put some garlic in there. It's a very, common ingredient in fire cider. So I'm just gonna crush that, peel off that skin. And you know, you wanna fine chop, but it doesn't have to be like crazy fine. We just want to release the aromatics and give some good surface area because we're gonna pour vinegar on all of this. We wanna make sure it can, yeah. We wanna make sure it can uh, get a good surface area for all these, all these herbs and spices. All right, so we've got ginger. So, so far ginger, turmeric, garlic, 
elderberry. I mean, that's a fabulous combo in and of itself. <laughs> it's common to put an onion in there. I'm just not really feeling onion today, so I'm not gonna put onion in there. I am gonna put some horseradish. If I can get it open, there we go, for just a nice kick. I'm not a super huge horseradish fan, but I like the benefit, so I'm gonna put that in there as well. Um, and then citrus is something that is often included in a fire cider. So here I have some orange peel. It's dried, I need to use it up, so I'm gonna use that. So I'm gonna pour a bit in here. Whoa, that's maybe, I don't know, a quarter cup, but yeah, you know what? I'm gonna put the rest in here. I would love for this to be orange forward. Citrus, you know, that's really great for your, the system that helps us to clear things out, to feel better. And um, so you could do lemon, you could do orange. I'm gonna put another cinnamon stick in there. I'm telling you, I'm really just, just going for it. Now, we got in from the garden today. The uh, junior herbal apprentices were helping me to pick. We have some super hot peppers. I think these are habaneros. So you could use these, you could use jalapenos, you could use cayenne. I think I'll do about, whoo, <laughs> it is, it is, I, it, this is, this is strong, y'all. All right, I'm gonna put three of those in there. I might regret that, but we'll see. My fingers are tingling already. So some sort of pepper in there. What else did we get? Oh, we found one remaining echinacea flower. You could do some echinacea root in here if you're, if you're digging. This is such a stunning flower. Thank you, flower. So I'm gonna put that in there. And then we were talking about elderberry this morning and how antiviral it is. And so we studied lemon balm a couple months ago. And so they were all excited about the potential of combining lemon balm with elderberry in some herbal preparations for the fall and winter just to really support, support our bodies and our systems and just the health and the healing. Oh, and as I am chopping this too, I'm getting wafts. I totally forgot that we put in here some bee balm, the last of the green bee balm leaves. It's very sagey. Okay, so it got that like sage oregano flavor in there that's also really, really good for supporting your immune system. So again, I'm just gonna give this a nice rough chop. And you know what's so great about a lot of these too? The ginger, the lemon balm, the orange, they're really mood boosting. So taking a little bit of this every day throughout the winter really will help to keep spirits up and body strong, which is what we like. And like how gorgeous is that? Really, really nice. Oh, and it just smells divine and spiced faux show. All right, so we've got ginger, turmeric, cinnamon, onion usually goes in. Like I said, I'm not really feeling the onion, so I'm not gonna do it. Garlic, hot peppers, lemon balm, bee balm, echinacea leaf, elderberry, did I say elderberry? Already, horseradish. There are a lot of things you can do. You could add thyme, oregano, um, all of those good rosemary kitchen spices. So you know the Four Thieves? I don't know if y'all have heard of that blend. There's an essential oil company that has a Four Thieves blend. And I think that was thyme, oregano, rosemary, lavender, I think. But anyway, the story goes that during the plague, there were grave robbers and they couldn't figure out why the people who were robbing these graves, the graves of the deceased who had died from the plague, were not getting sick. And they finally they figured out who it was and found four young men who were drinking those. One of their moms had given them this, this little vinegar elixir, this vinegar infusion of those herbs, um, and lavender would be a good one to put in. They were drinking it, and so they weren't getting sick. So lavender, one of the herbs 
Mm, very calming. So I think it'll be nice to have a little bit of calming in here with all of these other herbs and spices that are just get you fired up. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lavender, not too much because it's very strong, but highly antimicrobial. And we know what it does for our nervous system. And then while I was in the cabinet, I saw these rose tips. And I thought, perfect. Vitamin C. So we've got the vitamin C from the orange, but let's, let's add some rose hips in there too. And from the elderberries. So this is gonna make an amazing fire cider. Now, super simple. You get your herbs in the jar. I mean, you can literally make this with anything from your kitchen, garlic, ginger, um, onions, and then look in your spice cabinet. Cinnamon, um, nutmeg, clove, oregano, thyme, rosemary. Make it with what you have. Maybe a little holy basil sprig would be lovely in here too for the winter. All you're gonna do is fill this up. Maybe give it a little stir. These colors are remarkable and it already is smelling so good make sure to get all those elderberries stirred around yes all right so stir that around and may do look at this color already y'all some hibiscus in there would be nice okay and piece of parchment paper because we don't want any of the vinegar to corrode the metal. There we go. And you're gonna store it for about mm, six weeks or so. Every now and then, give it a little stir. Really watch as the vinegar starts to take on the color of all these amazing herbs and spices. And then when you're finished, you can make like so many things with this medicine you can make salad dressing. So strain it after about six weeks and mix it with some olive oil for salad dressing. You can add it to grain dishes just for that extra little boost, that immune boost. You can add it to broths. It's a good thing to add some vinegar to broths as they're cooking to help to break down the bones and extract the minerals. So this would be a fabulous one. Um, you can make my favorite way to take this is to take a little one ounce, you know, shot measure, take some cider, put it in a, put it in a cup and fill it with sparkling water. And that is phenomenal as well. The last little trick, so you can do it straight, but what I really love to do, strain it out, strain the vinegar into a mason jar and then fill the rest of that mason jar with honey. So it's a little like oxymel ish and then shake it really well and it is fantastic. The sweetness of the honey balances the spiciness and the fieriness of the cider, of the fire cider. And also we're getting those good um, immune boosting properties from the honey. So what I would do, so you can do it straight. My favorite way to do it, six weeks, shake it every now and then, strain it, and then add honey to the liquid. And there are some cool things that I've been reading about in this book, Fire Cider, that you can do with the leftover herbs, the leftover spices. It's called the Mark. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, my favorite one, is to dehydrate them and grind them and use it as like a nut seasoning. That sounds fantastic. So, again, you cannot go wrong with this recipe. You want very spiced spices very aromatic, you want the spicy herbs, the immune boosting herbs, the antiviral, antibacterial, the ones that are good for your whole body and also help your throat and your chest. So we've got the, the elderberry, we've got the bee balm, yeah, the lemon balm. But again, if you don't have those, fill it up with herbs and spices from your kitchen. Have fun, play, and Let's make this winter feel good. Give ourselves a little pep in our step this winter. All right, we'll see you soon.